say I'm giving for all I am to you so let your Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in today. My name is Brad, I'm the lead pastor at the River Church community. And especially if you are new to the river, you're just checking things out, I wanna say how delighted I am that you're exploring. Let us know how we can serve you in any way possible. You can find staff contact information on our website in the About Us section. We're here to serve you. Well today, we're engaging scripture through a medium that's referred to as godly play. It's the curriculum that our children's ministry follows on most Sunday mornings. Now, before you go anywhere, you may wonder, why are we using a children's curriculum today? That's a great question, and there are a couple of answers to that. One is that it expresses our value to be an intergenerational faith community. You know, there's a lot said in the Bible, both the Old Testament and the New, about one generation speaking of the wonders and mysteries of God to the next generation. And uh, current research shows that one of the best ways to do that is by worshiping together, not by sending kids off to their own experience. So we do believe in sort of developmentally appropriate learning, but once in a while we want to come together. So that's what we're doing in this. But secondly, Jesus said the most interesting words about what's necessary for us to experience his presence in all its fullness. He said that if we want to enter in to the kingdom of God, to the realm of God, if we want to taste 
of God's goodness, his sweetness. Well, we have to become like children. So that's the second reason why we're doing that. And wherever you come from on the spiritual journey, I think this can be a blessing to you. Let me say a quick word uh, that may help us experience godly play in a more meaningful way. You know, adult sermons are filled with uh, information and explanation and exhortation and all that can be super helpful to us. Godly play is a different medium than that. It's intentionally slower. It's intentionally sparing. It's attempting, I think, to create the kind of space that helps us tune in to the whisper of the Holy Spirit of God. And that's my prayer for all of us, wherever it is we're coming from on the spiritual journey today. So with all of that said, I want to invite us to close our eyes for a moment. Let ourselves be quiet in the presence of God. If there are worries or hurries that are racing in your heart, we could all name the source of those and entrust them into the hands of the God who loves you. And now let me pray. God, we give this time to you. Help us to entrust fears, worries, threats to you. And give us grace now to hear your voice as Christy comes and leads us in this story. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi, my name is Christy Chang, and I serve as a storyteller in the green room, normally at church. And I'm excited to be here today with you as an All Church Sunday and tell the story for our church. Here we go. Well, today we're going to talk about the Bible. And the Bible is actually a lot of different books. So I have this cool library here. And if you took all the books of the Bible and you spread them out, it would look maybe something like this. That's a lot of books in the Bible. And today, we're gonna to take all those books and understand how they're all together in the Bible. And we're just gonna talk about one of the books. So if you open the Bible, here's, here's my Bible. Actually, this is the church's Bible. But we have the beginning. If you open to the front, there's the beginning. And then if you open to the back, there's the ending. But also, that's also a beginning. But if you open right to the middle of the Bible, here we go. Right in the middle of the Bible is the book of Psalms. Now the book of Psalms is a really important book and it has a lot of beautiful words. And these beautiful words have often been made into songs. And the reason why they've been made into songs is because it helps us to remember them. Because sometimes in my family, we get songs stuck in our head and then we remember the, the words because we keep singing them over and over again. And that's what people did a long time ago. King David wrote a lot of the Psalms, and then people would sing them on the way to the temple, and they would sing them in the temple, kind of like sometimes we sing in our car on the way to church, and we sing in church, and people would reflect on the songs and the Psalms as they would sing, and sometimes they would say them. Today, we're going to read a few of them, but before they do, I'm going to talk about a little bit about what the Psalms are. The psalm is a very special word. It has a silent P. And it's very cool because it really helps us to learn how to talk to God. It helps us to learn how to thank God for all the things that he gives us that are good. And it also helps us because sometimes we get a lot of feelings in ourselves, like big feelings and we get jumbled up and sometimes we feel like we're kind of a mess because we have so many feelings jumbled up together. Sometimes we feel sad. Sometimes we feel frustrated. Sometimes we feel really excited. And sometimes they're all together. But the Psalms help us to understand what's happening. And they help us to know how to talk to God about it, how to pray. And when we do that, then we're able to understand those feelings. And it helps us to tease it out a little bit. So we're going to read some Psalms today. And... Um, Maybe you might feel like you can feel a feeling from there too. So I'm going to read, I'm going to move this a little bit here. Actually, I'll move it here back so I can move those. 
and I'm going to read just the first line because the Psalms don't have a um, title, but they have a number. And a lot of people know the Psalms because of the beginnings. So I'm going to read all of the beginnings of just 10 Psalms. And then we're going to pick a few, or we're going to just pick two to wonder about. Okay? So the first one I'm going to read is from Psalm 18. And the, line, the first sentence says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. And the next psalm I'm going to read is from Psalm 22. And the first line says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning. The next psalm is from Psalm 23. And the first sentence says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And the next psalm is from Psalm 46. And the first line says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And the next psalm is from Psalm 51. And the first line says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. And the next psalm is from Psalm 61, and the first line says, Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. And the next psalm is from Psalm 95, and the first line says, O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. And the next psalm is from Psalm 121. Oh, I think I forgot to tell you that there's 150 psalms. Wow. All right. The first line of this psalm says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? And the next psalm is from Psalm 139. And the first line says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. And the last psalm that we're going to read today is from Psalm 150, the last psalm. And the first line says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Those are all the psalms that we're going to read today, but we're going to choose two to wonder about. And I'm going to choose for us today. I'm going to choose Psalm um, 46 as our first one to wonder about. I'm going to read you the whole part. Okay, this is Psalm 46. And the verses we're going to read today are just from 1 through 3 and 10 through 11. And it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. We're going to wonder about that in just a moment, but I'm going to pick one more to talk about. Hmm. I think I'm going to read Psalm 95, which says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our Maker. 
for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. You think of a song actually. You might make you think of a song. All right, now we're going to have a time of wondering. And normally in Godly Play, we go around the circle and we say one question at a time. But for today, I'm going to say all the questions slowly. And then you're going to talk to your grown up about your um, response. Okay? And we're going to not just talk about those two psalms that I pointed out. You can pick any of the psalms that you'd like to talk about if you're interested. Okay? So the first question is, which of these psalms do you like the best or the most? And the next question is, which part do you think is the most important? And the last question is, which part do you think you see yourself in? Or to put it another way, which part do you think might be especially for you today? And as we leave today, I want us to think about maybe memorizing a psalm. Because when we memorize them, we get it into our heart. Kind of like we get a song stuck in our head. And when we can keep it in our heart, then when we go through a feeling that we don't understand, or something that might be hard, then we have it in our heart. And we can bring it out and remember that God is with us and God is going to help us through that feeling. Hope you have a great day.
is our refuge, our strength and our shield, the ever-present help. We will not fear, though the earth gives way, and the mountains crash into the sea. There is a river whose streams will make glad the city of our Most High King. And God is within her, and she will not fail. He helps her at break of the day. in uproar men's kingdoms they fall he speaks and the earth melts away of course we imagine the strongest of storms the fortress it will still remain there is a river streams will make glad the city of our most high king and God is within her and she will not fail listen and hear the Lord say be still and know that
still my path is clear. You are beside me. You guide me for the sake of your name. The King of Love, my Shepherd is. The thing I lack, if I hear His, in any affliction, a table is set. Thanks so much for joining us today, friends. I hope there was something in word or song or in the quietness of space in which you heard the whisper of God's Spirit. If you did, I encourage you to write that down and chew on it. And if you're struggling somehow in your spiritual journey, please contact us. Let us know how we can be of help to you. That would be our heart's desire. With that, I'd like to send you with the blessings. I invite you to close your eyes and hold your hands before you, palms raised to the sky, a way of letting our body lead our hearts into a posture of openness. And I pray, may the God who loves you pour out his spirit upon you, wash away every fear and anxiety, 
and grant you great joy and peace that uh, anchors you in every storm of life. May his joy be your center this day. And now, friends, I send you out into the world everywhere you go, in word and deed. You are the instruments of God's peace. So as you go today, may the peace of Christ go with you. Thanks again for coming. I do hope we'll see you soon. Bye. I will trust